For 90 days, I've been singing an hour a day to see if I can improve. On day one, I was really bad, like close to tone deaf bad. Uh, da, da. But coming into day 60, I felt like I'd made a lot of improvement. If you've missed the first two videos in this series, make sure to check those out. The link will be in the description below. But on day 60, I felt like I had the tools that I needed to continue progressing. Some of the big takeaways over the first 60 days were the fact that my range had improved quite a bit. I could hit notes that I hadn't previously thought possible. My ear had also improved. I could hear when I was off pitch and I was starting to get more comfortable with singing. Laying low, seeking out the poor quarters where the ragged people go, looking for the places only they would know. Coming into day 60 though, I felt like I needed a change because there were some days where I just hated the singing process and I was getting really discouraged. So I decided to ask my aunt, who is a professional singer in Spain, to help me sing. My aunt's name is Ruth Lorenzo. She competed in the British X Factor in 2008 and got fifth. And she's had multiple singles hit the top charts in Spain. She is an incredible singer and she and I have always had a very close relationship. I love talking to her and I feel very comfortable talking to her and being silly with her. So when we started lessons, I was able to really just be myself and tell her the truth about how I was struggling and what things I really wanted to accomplish by day 90. I wanted to be able to feel comfortable with my voice and be able to sing and not feel like I hated what was coming out. On the first day of singing with her, I realized these next 30 days were going to be very different. She gave me exercises that were foreign to me. For example, one of the things she had me doing was uh, blowing air and making like a bubbling sound, like And on the very first day, I couldn't even make that sound. And that's supposed to just relax your face. And I was so bad at relaxing my face, I had to actually press in on my face, on my cheeks, so that I could relax my face enough to blow air through. We also significantly slowed down the pace of what I was trying to accomplish. We tackled only one song. We were only going to sing Hallelujah from that point on, and all the exercises were specifically tailored to Hallelujah. We'd sing just one phrase of hallelujah and repeat it and then try different exercises to target what was going wrong with that phrase. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it please the Lord. Okay, we'll go back. Let's do this. I heard there was a secret chord. Sing that for me. I, I heard there was a secret chord. When you go secret, you're throwing it back here. I heard the was a secret court. No, I heard the was a secret court. I want you to show, I want you to see your teeth all the time. And I heard, uh uh, I heard the was a secret court. Try and think that you're supporting your voice right here, right on top of your chest, okay? She also told me to not sing so often. She, she said I could still sing in the shower or in the car and for fun, but I shouldn't practice every day because I was going to start hating singing if I did, which was true. That's what I had been experiencing. I'd been experiencing a lot of lack of motivation and just not enjoying my time singing. She told me to start practicing two to three times a week and then continue singing every day, but just have those singing sessions be for fun. The actual practice should only happen a couple times a week. I still wasn't sounding great. I was singing hallelujah every day and I was starting to notice the places where I tended to be pitchy. Hitting that last hallelujah, which ends on an E, was really hard for me. Baffled King composing. Baffled King composing. The Baffled King composing. And there were other areas where I was struggling with pitch, but 
As time went on and I continued singing just the song and doing the exercises that targeted this song, I started feeling more comfortable and I started realizing what things I needed to improve. I saw a clear direction to fixing the mistakes I was making. I began playing around with my tone. I started singing Hallelujah as though I were an opera singer. And I started singing it as though I were just speaking, like what it would sound like if I hit the pitches, but just in my normal talking voice. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing. Hallelujah! It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing. Hallelujah! And by playing around with pushing my tone to different sides of the spectrum, I think I found a sound that I really enjoyed. And when I sang this for my Aunt Ruth, she was amazed by the progress I had made. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? That is like 10 steps ahead from where we were last week. Well, actually, two weeks before. That's exactly what you need to do. Then the next thing to tackle was phrasing. And this was something that my aunt pointed out to me. If you sing as though you're singing with a metronome, it's really boring and bland and it sounds artificial. So in order to really sound like a song, like a true artist, you have to play around with your phrasing. So that's the next thing I tried to tackle. Okay, so your homework for this week is that you're gonna build up a phrasing that is not I heard there was a secret chord that David played. Uh, uh, uh. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and he pleased the Lord. Singing is talking. It's really not singing. So when you talk and you say things, you, you mean them in a certain way. So you need to mean this in a certain way. Hitting the right pitches with the right tone and having a complimentary phrasing to go with it. All of these things at once are really hard to tackle. So I'm really happy that we only sang one song and everything we did was tailored to just this one song. So at the end of these 90 days, I've gone back to enjoying singing. I like singing in the shower. I like singing in the car. Singing in the shower is especially fun because your vocal cords are warm. You have the, the steam going and you can just blast it. You can sing as though you really are an opera singer and just go at the top of your lungs. I still don't sound amazing, but I'm very happy with the progress I've made from day one. My acres of a land I have achieved it may be hard for you to stop and believe, but for you, ooh, you, ooh, I'd leave it all. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Better. My aunt said something really interesting at the end of these 90 days for our last lesson. Yes, you're ready to learn how to sing. Which was really interesting to hear because I'd spent 90 days practicing singing, but really I spent 90 days learning the skills necessary to start learning this craft. 
singing is not gonna be something that I master in 30 days. It might not even be something I master in my lifetime, but it's going to be something that I continue working on for the rest of my life. If you enjoyed this video and want to see me try to master new skills, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if there's anything you think I should learn next.